io scusa io ho ah, visto gli altri scusa. progetti se ah, altri sì. progetti, altri progetti. Oltre a... anche se in realtà stanno girando Vallander 2 ti ha risposto sì, eh, sì. Però sapere se oltre a cinema cinema, cinema. Uh, well, well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm uh, currently uh, in preparation for uh, a film that I'm directing um, of uh, Thor, the, uh, um, uh, the Marvel superhero and also the, uh, the Norse god of thunder. Um, he's both those things. He's a Norse god and he's a Marvel superhero. And it's a, a rather... Um, it's a fascinating, fascinating character and a fascinating uh, world. Um, of the of the comics and of the myths, so I'm enjoying that hugely. We, we start shooting that at the beginning of next year. Francesca Gorini dell'Università di Milano. Vorrei chiedere al signor Branagh, tornando ad Amleto, lei è stato attore sia di di teatro sia di di cinema, quindi mi chiedevo se il suo approccio nei confronti della performance teatrale eh, è stato diverso rispetto alla performance cinematografica. The difference uh, between the theatre and film approaches, as, as I've got older actually, they aren't so different. Um, the ultimate goal is, is truth and uh, it's a question of the... Um, the magnitude, if you were in a theatre like this, you'd want to, whatever you were doing, make sure that the truth was communicated to people in the, in the back of the theatre. Um, but um, I enjoyed recently, I was in the theatre last autumn, I played in Chekhov's play Ivanov uh, in, uh, in the West End of London, and I particularly enjoyed, actually, having come to it directly from Wallander, Wallander's world is so internal. One of the exciting things for me as an actor was to be much stiller, say much less than I usually do, um, and for so much of his performance to be conveyed through his reaction. Um, so in that sense, quite a lot of pure film acting was required, I think. Um, and I think quite a lot of that bled into the experience of doing the Chekhov play, which is very, in its way, um, a, a, a naturalistic drama. Um, and so I think I think um, maybe I gave more of an internal performance than the, in in the Ivanov than I might otherwise have done, and I think he benefited from that. Um, but I suppose generally the approaches start to become similar in as much as I find myself drawn to trying to do less and less and less doing, and more and more and more being. Uh, and this is a difficult thing to do, but, but projects like Wallander or, or, or Chekhov's Ivanov encourage you to try and do that. You, you often, often, often get it wrong, but when you get it right, it's very, very satisfying. And so the approaches are quite similar. <laughs> Volevo sapere in che modo, uh, muovendosi tra cinema e teatro principalmente, che sono due, due mezzi molto diversi per tempi e dinamiche, in che modo lei riesce a parlare al cinema con le parole del teatro e sempre in maniera efficace? Quali i meccanismi sono che la muovono? Um, well, it's a question that um, quite a lot of the work that I've done um, tries to answer or tries to find a way to answer. Um, and usually with the Shakespeare films, where you're absolutely right to say that, you know, they, build, they come from another medium um, where Shakespeare was writing for audiences without, without uh, film, video, TV, where, where words had to provide all of that. So you could argue, why make films of them? The words, the words do it. The words are for the audience's imagination. But I suppose I, I, f I found myself inspired by the words to to find images. So, for, for instance, um, in, uh, in fact, Molto Romore Per Nulla, here, um, um, the, uh, the, my cinematic response to that was to understand that the beginning of the play, in very, very broad terms, was about a group of women anticipating the return of a group of men. So, in the play, there's a longish scene in which they're spoken about, Beatrice and her her friends discuss the return of Benedict and Don Pedro, etc. But in the cinema, it becomes a, probably a five, six, seven minute overture of images. So, um, so the, uh, the translation is, um, 
about suddenly seeing Denzel Washington through heat haze in a pair of blue leather trousers on a horse in 103 degrees of heat in Toscana coming over a hill and I understand quite a lot about why those women are anticipating his return uh, then um, through through images uh, and it's basically about about you know Denzel Washington suddenly appearing and people being really rather interested um, which I'm not saying replaces a page of dialogue from Shakespeare it's a response to a page of dialogue from Shakespeare knowing that in a shortened version that also someone like Denzel Washington will be able with with few words and in a film that also includes that that same image which is about being a soldier and about returning and about being muscular and visceral and, and uh, sort of involved in war and flesh and the earth uh, that he could also convey intelligence and intimacy in a very strong sense of the interior life of the character so that there's there's a sort of little substrata of cinema that might be the one that I try and find myself in which is where a dialogue based medium reduces the number of words but tries to inspire a new group of images that are a poetic response to the words that are missing but retain some words which very fine cinema artists like Denzel can convey so that you some new translation of the material comes across and once again it's quite difficult to do but you, I suppose you that's one way that's one explanation of how I did it with that particular film or trying to do it tre domande ancora c'è qualcuno prego Sì, eh, buongiorno, sono Susanna Perlis, direttore dell'Irish Film Festa di Roma. E faccio, io mi occupo di cinema irlandese, faccio una domanda che però spero sia di interesse generale. Vorrei sapere, <coughs> Kenneth Branagh è nato a Belfast, però si rintraccia quasi nulla nella sua carriera legato al cinema irlandese. C'è un motivo per questo? Uh, there's no conscious reason. Um... Uh, my very first job as a, as a television, as an actor, my very first job as an actor was in a television drama and it was an Irish play. And in fact, uh, it became, it, it was in a strain of television. It was, the, the, the plays were called, you'll know this well, Play for Today. It was a time when new writing was on television, you know, once or twice a week, new, inter I mean, very interesting, challenging dramas. This was one of them, it was in 1982. Uh, and it then spawned three other plays. So there was a, it ended up being a quartet. Of course, being Irish, they called it a trilogy. Uh, but it was four plays um, uh, by Graham Reed about the same family. And I suppose that was my... Uh, I, Graham was a, is a significant writer over there, and it was, it was a significant piece of work from him. Um, and very, very um, well watched, not only in Northern Ireland um, and the rest of Ireland, but, but also uh, in, the, in the UK. Um, and then I suppose later I did a, a um, Sean O'Casey play, Shadow of a Gunman. Um, and I've always been toying with a, a trilogy inspired by events in my family that, that span a, 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 a quite a long period of time in, uh, in, in Irish history in the, in the North of Ireland. But I suppose I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, I, you know, simple as that. Altre domande? Prego. Roberto Lafrigio, Produzione Mentale.